Okay, I want to add a little bit to the video on Passover and how it is the gateway to uh, leaving Egypt and Babylon and part of part of salvation, uh, a, a path into salvation. Um, I read here in Exodus 12, verse 24, I mean 22, says, You shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood which is in the basin, and apply some of the blood that is in the basin to the lintel and to the doorpost, and none of you shall go out the door of his house until morning. So, one of the things that I would put there, bring up is this idea of the hyssop. Um, the, the hyssop is important, and also you see in the previous verses from verse 14 to 21, it's talking about unleavened bread which comes right after Passover which is about cleansing the leaven out of the house and leaven representing sin and but like Yeshua said beware the leaven of the Pharisees but uh, the this part about hyssop I wanna you, you find the whole thing of hyssop also in the uh, cleansing of the lepers which you would find in Leviticus 14 and 15 I believe it is or maybe 16 and you also find it in the red heifer sacrifice which was used to cleanse the water and some other things but I, I want to turn to John 19 and uh, talk about um, the crucifixion. We read in uh, verse 29 of John 19, A jar of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of sour wine upon a branch of hyssop and brought it up to his mouth. Therefore when Jesus had received the sour wine he said it is finished and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. There again you see the hyssop which is you see this over and over and over in scripture with all sorts of things where you'll find this concept uh, over and over and over again and like I've done a video before about Yeshua being the holy flesh and his healing of people was evidence that he was the Messiah as well because of Leviticus 6 verse uh, let's see Leviticus 6 verse 20 uh, 27 anyone who touches its flesh will become consecrated when any of its blood splashes on a garment in a holy place you shall wash what was splashed on and uh, this is talking about the sacrifices. And I talk about the priest eating it. Verse 26, it says, The priest who offers it for a sin, for sin shall eat it. It shall be eaten in a holy place. So, you know, where Yeshua says, Take this, this is my flesh. 
obviously wasn't talking about eating his per his flesh tr um, his actual flesh it was, it was symbolic and it also is symbolic of the wedding but we see these things and and there's just so many of these parallels and I would encourage you to to really look at this stuff and uh, you know when the in Acts 2 where uh, the Holy Spirit is bestowed upon his people where I think it's 238 in the name of the repent Peter said to them when they were asking what shall we do he says Peter said to them repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit so the the Holy Spirit is a gift we, we are baptized and we are baptized in the name of, in the character of Yeshua. Why is that important? Because he was an unblemished lamb. He was the lamb of God. Which is so critical. And uh, where you see where the Holy Spirit was bestowed upon the apostles. And it says in the uh, Acts 2 17 and it shall be in the last days God says that I will pour forth my spirit on all mankind and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall dream shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams any uh, even my bond slaves both men and women I will in those days pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy I will grant wonder you know so we see all these different things and when did he come to him remember when Yeshua came to him in Acts it was uh, at Pentecost you know he says receive the Holy Spirit in Acts 2 verse 4 it says and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and of course people will say oh we'll see they were speaking in tongues and blah 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 but not everyone was meant to speak in tongues um, and verse 1 it says when the day of Pentecost had come they were all together in one place and suddenly there came from having a noise like a violent rushing wind and it was and it filled the whole house where they were sitting and there appeared to them tongues as of fire distri distributing themselves and they rested on each one of them but tongues were meant so that people could understand it's not supposed to be gibberish but the why the Holy Spirit you notice the Holy Spirit was given on Pentecost just like the law was given on Pentecost at Sinai why does this matter because we are we accept the wedding we, we accept the marriage proposal when we drink the bread eat the bread and drink the wine as Yeshua's bride we accept that and then we and we accept the contract the Torah the the wedding contract the ketubah which by the way we can't change we don't change the ketubah we can't change his ketubah with us his wedding contract with us and he he gave us the Holy Spirit to as we obey he gave us the Holy Spirit to um, help us live 
a Torah lifestyle, to sin less and less and less. You can read John 16 all about what the Holy Spirit does. Convert, convicting versus sin, verse, uh, regarding sin, regarding judgment, and regarding righteousness. You know, because Satan was judged, and concerning sin, because the wages of sin is death. Um, so, you know, there is a purpose behind the Holy Days. And it is a way of salvation. It, it says we, we accept Yeshua at the Passover, as part of the Passover, with also, of course, baptism. Baptism, and you can even read in, in uh, <coughs> 1 Corinthians 10 about how uh, they were baptized when they went through the when they went through the sea that they were baptized uh, as they went through because that was laid out as a that yeah see it says in uh, verse 2 of First Corinthians 10 and all were baptized in, into Moses in the cloud and in, in the sea and all ate of the same spiritual food and all drank of the same spiritual drink for they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them and the rock was Christ we need to be drinking from from that rock that is Christ what is he he's the living Torah the Torah is key in, in working out our salvation fear and trembling we become less and less sinful and become more and more obedient which is the whole purpose we, we are saved we, we are justified through Christ we are sanctified with the Holy Spirit the read pray obey obedience being a big part of that too you know he pours out his spirit upon those who obey because why should he pour out a spirit on you if you don't obey? So hopefully this gives you an idea of more about what Passover is about. And I would encourage you to pray about it. And, and Passover is a little less than a month away. If you're not, if you're not uh, clean by then, then there is a second Passover, the second month on the 14th day of the month, which is, uh, you know, the months start with the first sliver of the moon. And uh, so I would highly encourage you to pray about this and read about it and seek to understand it. And, and time is getting short. Time is very, very short. May you eat the spiritual food that is in this book. And may it change your life. Shalom, shalom.